Welcome to another episode of Interactive Biology TV, where we're making biology fun. My name is Leslie Samuel, and in this video, I'm going to be talking about the structure of the scapula. More specifically inside this video, first I'm going to talk about the three borders and the three angles of the scapula. Then I'm going to talk about the surfaces of the scapula. And lastly, the processes of the scapula. So let's get right into it. Here I'm looking at the scapula, and we've looked at this in a previous video before. Uh, but one thing I want to point out, the first thing I want to point out is that it kind of has a triangular shape. And like any triangle, it has three angles and three borders. And I want to point those out. So the first border, the first angle, let's, talk, let's start with the angles first. Um, so here we have the superior angle. And then we have the inferior angle. And then we have the lateral angle, or you can call this the glenoid angle. So you can use either of those two, lateral or glenoid angle. And then, of course, we have our three borders. So here we have the medial border. Here we have the lateral border. And here we have the superior border border. All right, so the three angles, superior, inferior, and lateral or glenoid. And then we have the medial, lateral, and superior borders. Those are the three angles and borders. All right, now let's get into some more fun details now. Here we have, we're going to start by looking on the dorsal aspect of the scapula. So looking from the back. And the first structure that I want to point out is a, a very obvious structure, and that is the spine of the scapula. This structure here is the spine of the scapula. Right here we have the base of the spine, and then the, the spine, as it projects laterally, it's going to end in this projection that's called the acromion process. And we've kind of spoken about that process in a previous video, but I want to talk about it again. Uh, that is the acromion process. That's the high point. Uh, it comes from the word Acropolis in Greek. Now, Acropolis is a city that's high on, uh, on an elevation, and that's what we're referring to here. That's the high point of the scapula. Um, so spine, the base of the spine, and the acromion or the acromion process of the scapula. So here we have the spine, as I mentioned, and conveniently, we have a space above and below that spine, and the, the space that's above, the fossa that's above, we're going to call that the supraspinous, supra for superior, and spinous, referring to the spine, supraspinous fossa, and beneath that, we're going to have the infraspinous fossa. Infra, referring to inferior. Okay, so supraspinous fossa and infraspinous fossa. And then if we were to flip this around and look on the anterior surface, we have this fossa here that we're going to call the subscapular fossa. So supraspinous fossa, infraspinous fossa, and the subscapular fossa. One more projection that's on the um, on the scapula, and that's going to be an anterior and lateral the anterior pro projection. Uh, that is the coracoid process, and that's going to be very significant. It kind of looks like a bent finger, a bent thumb to me at least. Um, but those are the processes. So we have the uh, coracoid process, and we have the acromion process. Now let's talk about the last fossa, and that's called the glenoid fossa. We've spoken about that already, and that is this structure right here, the glenoid fossa. Uh, you can see it looking from the side right here, the glenoid fossa. And surrounding the glenoid fossa, we have a structure that I'm going to call the glenoid labrium, L-A. Let's write that out since it's not here the glenoid labrium, uh, and with that we have associated the glenoid ligament. Okay, so the glenoid labrium and the glenoid 
ligament. Now, if you remember, this is where we have the glenohumeral joint. It's where the head of the humerus is articulating with the scapula. And what that labrium does is it allows for the cavity here to be deeper to allow for more rotation of the humerus, the head of the humerus in that glenoid fossa. There, there are two more structures that I want to point out here. And you can't see it very clearly uh, up here, but right at the bottom of the glenoid fossa, we have kind of like a roughened um, tubercle that we call the infraglenoid tubercle. And then at the top, we have the supraglenoid tubercle. You can also see that a little bit here. Right here, we have this roughened projection, the infraglenoid tubercle. And at the top, we'll have the supraglenoid tubercle. So those are all the structures that I want to point out for now. So let's do our review quiz as usual. If you would like to review with me and test yourself, you can turn the volume down. And as I point things out, I want you to say what they are. So first, we're going to start with the simple. Here we have the superior angle, the inferior angle, and the lateral or glenoid angle. Then we have the medial border, lateral border, and superior border. Then we have the spine of the scapula with the acromion process and the base of the spine of the scapula. We have the supraspinous fossa, the infraspinous fossa, the subscapular fossa, and we have the glenoid fossa, or once again, this is the glenoid fossa. We have the coracoid process, and once again, the acromion process, and that would be it. So that's pretty much it for this video. If you'd like to get more videos and other resources to help make biology fun, visit the website at interactive-biology.com. That's it for this video. This is Leslie Samuel, and I'll see you in the next one.